What's happening out there, Donnie? I don't know. It doesn't look good. So do you know what a box office bomb is? Box office bomb is a movie that does not make its budget back or make back enough to be considered a profitable success. And the history of Hollywood is loaded with box office bombs aplenty. And I found out the other week that there was a Wikipedia page that lists off the biggest box office bombs of all time. And I start going through this list and like I start seeing some really great movies on this list. It's just like, you know, this was not as that bad of a movie. I don't know why this movie failed. And I also saw a lot of real stinkers on this list too. I thought, you know what? I think it'd be really fun to go through this entire list and review every single box office bomb according to Wikipedia. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be one video. This is going to be a series of videos. And I'm going to do it one movie at a time. Now, on this list, they have like a couple options of moving things around. And like I could do by how big the production was, what year it came out, worldwide gross, and estimated loss. I said I'm going to do it by estimated loss and adjusted for inflation. So of course at the bottom of this list is going to be the one that lost the least amount of money. And then the final one will be the one that lost the most amount of money. And another thing is that this list is... Um, it uh, has over 124 movies on it. So, uh, <laughs> this series is going to be going on for a while. <laughs> but, you know, I need content to do, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, this seems like a fun project to do. Every now and then, do the next movie on the list at the numerical rating of where it's at on Box Office Bombs. Now, obviously, as I'm going through this list, it's important that you watch this first one if you're following this series, at least until I start talking about this movie right here. But how this series is going to go is I'm going to start off at the bottom of what lost the least amount of money and work my way up to the one that lost the most amount of money. Obviously, you could go on Wikipedia and look at this list as well. So it's not going to be a huge surprise what each one is going to be every week. But if you're not feeling particularly bold to look it up, it'll be a nice little surprise for you. You know, like, okay, what eps what is this one going to be either this week or this episode and whatnot. Uh, also, another thing worth pointing out is that there's going to be new movies added onto this list continually. Not every single week, but I mean, there's been several movies from this year alone that have been added to this list. And quite frankly, uh, I'm going to have to adjust for that. Now, so what I'm going to do is if I'm at like 122 and another one pops up, if it's higher up at like number 77, I will adjust for that and add that. But... If it happens underneath of where I'm at on the review docket, like it's number 124 on how much it lost and I'm at 120 already, I'm not going to review it. All right. It'd be way too chaotic trying to add that in. So also I'm going to watch these movies, but I'm also going to reserve the right to bail on a movie if I couldn't get through it. There are some movies on this list that I have seen, I could not get through it, and I'll still tell you my thoughts on said new movie. But I might watch some movies and go, yeah, I just cannot get through this movie to save my life, and so I'm just gonna have to bail on it. And then there are other movies I've watched so many fucking times, it's like, I could just review this right now without having to watch it again because I own it. I watch it once a year. Seriously, there's some really great movies on this list. And so, yeah, I'm going to go through all that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to start off at the first one. It's at the bottom of the list. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows. And, yeah, this was considered a box office bomb. 
They had a budget of $135 million, okay? This was a huge summer box office uh, movie, and it made a box office of $245.6 million. So, obviously, right there, it's going to be, you could mistakenly say that this was a success. But the problem is, and I hate this about not only Wikipedia, but I hate this about movie studios, they only tell you how much they spend on making the movie. They never tell you how much they spend on marketing. And the marketing cost does go into the production, and the production does have to deal with said marketing costs. So, yes, this movie costs $135 million to make. But... This movie also spent probably $135 million to promote. Typically, a rule to go by, this isn't always the case. Sometimes it, it, it's less, sometimes it's more. But typically, if a movie's budget is, let's say, $50 million, the studio will spend $50 million on advertising for the movie. And so they have to make $100 million to break even. Usually, a movie needs to make its budget doubled to break even. So uh, this movie needed to make 260 million just to break even. And it only made 245 million. So it was considered a box office loss and uh, it lost 75 million dollars supposedly. That was the estimate loss on that movie and adjusted for inflation. This movie lost $85 million. Now, how is the movie? Well, this is a sequel to the live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And when that came out, a lot of people didn't like it because they just saw it as a Michael Bay film. Even though he didn't direct it, he just produced it. But holy shit, does it feel like a Michael Bay film? And so does this one. These really feel like, hey, Transformers was successful. Let's make all these, you know, kid brand products a Michael Bay experience. And, you know, they, they kind of got cocky and thought, yeah, we could Michael Bay the shit out of this. And, you know, with the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, it was like a okay movie. It wasn't great. Die Hard Ninja Turtle fans hated it, which I understand. I'm not a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. And so, like, I watched one of the cartoons in the early 2000s. But apart from that, I was never a huge fan. And I totally get it. If you're a Die Hard Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan and you hate this movie, I get it. Alright? But as just a casual normie who's not a huge fan of it, the first movie, I had fun with it. The whole, like... Avalanche sequence was pretty cool. I kind of liked how Shredder looked, even though they made him look like a Transformer. And I absolutely loved the Elveil sequence. That thing, like, almost redeemed the entire movie for me. <laughs> I mean, I absolutely loved that. But, I mean, like, no, I totally get why people didn't like Megan Fox as April O'Neil, because it's like, yeah, it's, it doesn't seem like you're trying to do an April O'Neil character. It seems like you're just trying to do the Michaela character from Transformers trying to get lightning to strike twice and Will on that kind of felt unnecessary in the first one but I will say watch that Alan Richardson interview about the making of the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie because holy fucking shit does that sound like a nightmare for those guys playing the four Ninja Turtles I mean apparently they were treated like fucking dog shit on a production of that first movie, and the live action actors were treated like royalty. And like, there was apparently, there was like one night where literally everyone went home and they were waiting for a ride and no one came to pick them up. And they were like in downtown Brooklyn. It's just like, yeah, that, that, you guys got hosed. Alright. <laughs> and of course, they didn't get paid as much as the live action actors. And so it's like, that really sucks. But going on to the sequel, it there were some fun moments, but ultimately, this was such a forgettable movie for me. I watched it, and like this is one of the movies where I watched it once, I didn't need to watch it again for this review. It's like, yeah, I, I've seen it. It wasn't something that I felt like watching again. Although, on this box office bomb list, there are a couple of movies. It's like, I've seen it before, it was really terrible, but I do kind of want to watch it again. <laughs> and, like, this wasn't that. It was... 
This was just like bland. It was like meh. I mean, th that's the best I could say for it. It wasn't so horrible that it was unwatchable, but at the same time, it there was like almost nothing amazing. It's like, oh yeah, it's worth it for that one scene, like the first one. I mean, there was like a couple of jokes, I think during like the skydiving sequence. It's like, okay, that was kind of funny. And I did like the computer-generated like effects of uh, Bebop and Rocksteady. I think, is it Rocksteady? Yeah, Rocksteady. I, I just get confused on that because it's like, wait, is that isn't that the video game developer Rocksteady? They did the Batman games. It's like, no, yeah, there's actually a character called Bebop and Rocksteady, and like they looked good from the cartoon I saw and like comic book and artist drawings I've seen of them. It's like, yeah, they look good, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles look like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you know, it, like, yeah, that does look pretty good. But I mean, like, with this one, they really, 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 really tried to dive into the sexual appeal of Megan Fox. And, like, growing up watching the cartoon, I think it was, like, the early 2000s cartoon I grew up watching. And, like, a lot of people have also agreed with me. It's like, April O'Neil was never, like, a sex object. I know a lot of cosplayers have turned her into a sex object. And, of course, you can always do Rule 34, which, please don't do that. But <laughs> it's... But, like, she was never kind of supposed to be that. And, like, the original 1980s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, she feels a lot more character accurate in that one than Megan Fox does in this one. And, I mean, yeah, this does definitely feel like a Michael Bay movie. But the one shiny part I will say is I did really like Stephen Amell as Casey Jones. Grant, he's not the best, and... The guy who did Casey Jones in the original 1980s movie, whose name I am forget, it's Elias Kodas or Coda, Elias Elias Kos. I'm not pronouncing his name right, but he's done some good parts, and like he honestly, I thought was a great Casey Jones in that old one. And Stephen Mel, he does a pretty decent job as Casey Jones. I think he has some of the funnier moments in this movie, and like honestly. He's one of the better parts of this movie, in my opinion. Some people might disagree with that. The uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like, you know, they're. It's fun seeing it, but at the same time, there's a little bit, like, too much slapstick humor for my liking. Although they do get a lot of the source material aspects in here. They get Beep Up and Roxy. Apparently, they do a more authentic shredder. This time around, they have like the ooze, they have the uh, battle fan, or like, I, well, I don't know, the turtle fan in this one. And so, yeah, if you're really looking for kind of like the more comic or the cartoon accurate like moments from, you know, the history of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you will see a lot of those here. But again, if you're a diehard fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this probably isn't going to be for you. If you're not a fan of just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in general, again, this probably isn't going to be for you either. This was just kind of like a meh movie. It, it just... It, it, it wasn't... I, I would say that it, it was somewhere in between disappointing and mediocre. I, you know, I mean, I'm not a huge Ninja Turtles fan, so I wouldn't say it's quite disappointing, but there's, like, no reason for a normie to see this movie either. Uh, it, at times, it's a trash fight. At other times, there's, like, some good humor, but, like, ultimately, this is a box office bomb that probably deserved its box office bomb. Although, probably, if they had just cut back on the expenses of the advertising and did a little bit of like accounting work they probably could have had this a box office success because it did make more than its budget it's just they probably spent a little bit too much on the advertising to this so supposedly they're working on a reboot hopefully they don't do the michael bay route because yes i like michael bay's transformer films even though the stories and writing and dialogue are pretty bad in them it's still he i liked the design of the transformers on those i liked like how he put his mark on it and i'll always go for a transformer movie even if the story sucks and the acting sucks because 
you're in a theater with a 30 foot tall screen and you get to see Transformers like almost life size. And so I'll always go to the theater to see Transformers movies. And like with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, they tried Michael Bane the shit out of it. And it, it just didn't quite stick the land. It didn't really did stick the landing, but you know. Yeah, that's pretty much about it for my thoughts on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequel, Out of the Shadows. And uh, yeah, this. Uh, uh, was a box office bomb which was not financially successful and yeah but it is at the bottom of the box office bomb list so you know there's that to consider it's not the biggest loser of the list and so yeah uh so that's been my box office bomb review of teenage mutant Ninja turtles out of the shadow what did you guys think is this a movie that you guys feel was unjustly a box office bomb or do you think it deserves its box office bomb status at 124 uh yell out down in the comments below my name is chris Kong, 11 hour reviews and that will be all until next box office bomb